My name is Kristen Palmston and I'm a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Epidemiology at the Harvard School of Public Health. I'd like to share our study with you on the use of antidepressants near the time of delivery and risk for postpartum hemorrhage. Many studies have reported that the use of serotonin reuptake inhibitor antidepressants is associated with an increased risk of gastrointestinal bleeding. So we wanted to know, does the use of serotonin and non-serotonin reuptake inhibitors near the time of delivery increase the risk for postpartum hemorrhage? To address this question, we use the Medicaid analytic extract from 2000 to 2007. Medicaid is the health insurance program for low-income individuals in the United States. The data source contains inpatient, outpatient, and pharmacy dispensing claims. We identified a cohort of 106,000 women with pregnancies ending in live birth who had a mood or anxiety disorder diagnosis. Women were categorized into four mutually exclusive exposure groups based on the dispensing date of prescription and day supply dispensed relative to the delivery date. Women with a supply of antidepressants that overlapped with the delivery date were considered to have current exposure regardless of previous exposure. Women with a supply of antidepressants on at least one day in the month before the delivery date but not on the delivery date were considered to have recent exposure. Women with a supply of antidepressants ending between five and one months before delivery were considered to have past exposure. Unexposed women were those with no supply of antidepressants in the five months before delivery. The unexposed group was the reference group. The risk for postpartum hemorrhage was lowest among women with mood or anxiety disorders, but no exposure to antidepressants at 2.8%. The risk was 4% in current users of serotonin reuptake inhibitors, 3.2% in recent users of serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and 2.5% in past users of serotonin reuptake inhibitors. The risk for postpartum hemorrhage was 3.8% in current users of non-serotonin reuptake inhibitors, 3.1% in recent users of non-serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and 3.4% in past users of non-serotonin reuptake inhibitors. We compared the risk of postpartum hemorrhage by timing of exposure and by whether the antidepressant was a serotonin or a non-serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Relative risks and 95% confidence intervals were adjusted for delivery year, risk factors for hemorrhage, severity indicators for mood or anxiety disorder, other indications for antidepressants, and other drugs. Compared with no exposure, women with current exposure to serotonin reuptake inhibitors had a 1.47-fold increased risk of postpartum hemorrhage. For recent exposure to serotonin reuptake inhibitors, the relative risk was 1.19, while women with past exposure to serotonin reuptake inhibitors did not have an increased risk for postpartum hemorrhage. Women with current non-serotonin reuptake inhibitor exposure had a 1.39-fold increased risk. For recent non-serotonin reuptake inhibitor exposure, the relative risk was 1.17. For past non-serotonin reuptake inhibitor exposure, the relative risk was 1.26. We also used high-dimensional propensity score methods to empirically identify and adjust for additional factors. We found that results using these methods were similar. To summarize, both serotonin and non-serotonin reuptake inhibitor use near the time of delivery was associated with an increased risk for postpartum hemorrhage. Results may reflect residual confounding by factors associated with depression severity. I invite you to read the full story at bmj.com. Thank you for your interest in our research.